really cool episode coming your way today. It is all about the total solar eclipse. It is getting closer. It takes place in early April. Now, we are not going to see totality here in Central Florida, but it is still going to be really cool. We're going to break down some of the cool things to look for as this eclipse is taking place. We'll show you where totality is if you're planning on making plans to go see it and break that part down. Stick around to the end of the episode while everybody is looking up in this eclipse. And of course, that's where it's going to be taking place in the sky. I'm going to give you a reason why you should be looking down at the ground. We're going to have that at the end of the episode. Also, totality will happen in Central Florida with another eclipse coming. It's still a ways away, but we will be in totality later on, decades away. I'm going to tell you when we get the totality portion of a total solar eclipse coming up. The map on the screen shows exactly what's going to go down on April 8th here. Now remember, we're not going to be in totality. That's where the main event is happening. That's going to be just towards our north and west. So coming out of Mexico, this is going to head right on through Texas. This is where you get the skies to darken up. You get the iconic diamond ring look. And we'll show you all that stuff coming up a little bit later on in the show. But here's the deal. It's going to slide through Arkansas. Again, this is totality up through southeast Missouri into Illinois. Fun fact, Carbondale small town in southern Illinois, they got totality back in 2017 too. So they're going to be the lucky few that get to see this twice through Indianapolis into central and western Ohio, back through Erie and Buffalo, and then finishing and exiting the United States through upstate New York into northern Vermont, northern New Hampshire, and into Maine. Still though, we are going to get a good chunk of the sun blocked by the moon here. We're going to see about 65% of the eclipse here. Now, with that said, we're going to have to keep those solar glasses on. We'll show you how to make one of those DIY viewers a little bit later on in the show. If you don't want to get those glasses or can't find them, they were hard to come by in 2017. You may remember there were also a lot of counterfeits. So we're going to show you all that coming up a little bit later on in the show. But from a Central Florida perspective on April 8th, this is what you can expect. The partial eclipse for us is going to begin at 1.46 in the afternoon. I mentioned this a little bit earlier that 65% of the sun is going to be blocked out. This is that Pac-Man look here. So the moon is going to take a bite right out of the sun. That's going to happen at 3.03, at least the maximum eclipse for us. We're going to notice the sky is going to a little bit darker. Maybe some of those heating of the day puffy clouds start to go down. They need that heating of the day to develop. So if we have those puffy clouds around, you're going to see those go away. And then eventually you'll see the temperatures gradually cool down a couple of degrees because the moon is literally blocking the sun's rays. The eclipse ends for us at 4.17 into the afternoon. So I'm talking about the moon blocking the sun. This is what's actually happening, by the way. Now, remember, we all know this. The moon is nowhere near as big as the sun, but it is positioned just in a way that it looks like from our perspective that it is as big as the sun. It's almost like when you put your thumb in front of the moon, you can block it. It's the same kind of deal here. That's what's going on. But the moon is moving in between the earth and the sun, and it's the moon's shadow that's being projected onto the earth and that's exactly where we have totality happen at i'll go back to that first graphic to show you again and it's the piece of that shadow it's that moon being projected right there into the path of totality we're at least in part of it. Again, the total solar eclipse is happening out towards our west. Earlier in the show, at the beginning, that I'm going to give you a reason to look down at the ground during the eclipse. Well, why in the heck do you want to look at the ground when the eclipse is happening in the sky? There's a really cool phenomenon that happens during an eclipse where if you're standing near a tree, the leaves actually act as a pinhole camera and project the eclipse onto the ground. There's a lot of weird things that happen during an eclipse, and that is just one of them, but it is really, really cool. So while you're using your approved glasses or using the DIY projector that we talked about making earlier in the show, if you don't want to use any of those, just look at the ground near a tree, and you will see the eclipse being projected through the leaves. It is a really, really cool phenomenon. Of course, we talked about the first two, those skies gradually darkening as, of course, the moon is moving in, in between the earth and the sun, and then the temperature dropping a couple of degrees. That is also a, a really cool thing to watch the thermostat or your thermometer if you have outside and watching it, uh, watching the temperature drop. Now, in 2045, we get all the marbles. We get the whole thing. A total solar eclipse is coming to Florida. This is where we get all the rage, what everybody's excited about. Again, these are one of those once-in-a-lifetime things. We're going to get, again, 2045. It's a long time away, but it is going to be worth the wait. Now, in a total solar eclipse, where you're in the path of totality, when the moon is completely blocking the sun, 
you can actually remove your glasses for a time. And it is recommended to do so because you can see the sun's atmosphere, the sun's corona, as it's called. That's that white, wispy stuff that you see. You normally can't see it because the sun is so, so bright. As the skies darken because the moon is moving in front of the sun, you can also see some of the brightest stars and planets in our sky. That would be unreal to see because it's going to be the middle of the afternoon or morning, depending upon where you're at, and you can see what you would typically see in the night sky in the middle of the afternoon. You also get the iconic diamond ring effect right after a totality as the moon starts to break free from the sun and the sun's rays start to come on through you get that beam of light right at the edge there and it looks like a diamond engagement ring it is really cool it's one of the things that people look forward to, to uh, most in a total solar eclipse so you get all of that that is coming to central florida everybody in central florida will get totality in 2045 but unfortunately we have to wait a very long time first and foremost never ever ever under any circumstances, look at the sun directly. In order to view this eclipse, you need to have specialized glasses that are approved. You saw these before, it's just cardboard. But these are very, very strong, these lenses. They are approved, and to make sure that you're not getting a, a knockoff or some fake ones, there were a lot going on in 2017, look for this ISO number. You see that right there, ISO, so that they're approved. And there's another little numbers there on the side of the screen. I have a write-up on clickorlando.com. Scan that QR code. It'll take you to that article. There, it will also bring you to a link where you can see a list of approved glasses. You can m easily mark that ISO logo on other glasses. So people that are trying to get you to buy fake glasses can easily counterfeit them. Again, the list that I have on clickorlando.com by scanning that QR code, again, that is going to allow you to find uh, very good sources to get your glasses if you want to get the glasses. Now, if you want to make your own do-it-yourself viewer so that you can safely view the eclipse, we're going to head outside to make that. First and foremost, before we get into this video, never, ever, ever observe the sun with the unaided eye. You need either approved solar glasses or a device like I'm about to show you. In order to make this device, just a few common household items. We're looking for scissors, some tape, a little glue stick will work just fine as well, aluminum foil, a piece of computer paper, and of course, a box so the box is the main part of this device this is the bigger box here but later on in this video i'll show you a more handheld version as well so stick around for the video for that also if you find this content helpful hit that subscribe button for me give it a thumbs up as well all right so in this for the sake of time i've already cut two holes this is what you need to do cut two holes into the long end of the box this is going to be so that you can look through one of them and then let the sunlight so that you can see the eclipse come through the other the next thing you need to do Take a piece of aluminum foil, and then we are going to tape it over one end of the box, or one end of that open mark right there. So we're gonna use this one here. This is where the sunlight is going to come through. Get real close on, you just need a little bit of tape, just like that. We're gonna tape all ends of this so that it, the wind doesn't blow it off. All sides just like that. All right, now taking either a small nail or a pencil, we're just going to poke a teeny tiny hole right on through, just like that. And that is where the sun is going to come through. Believe it or not, that is the device. That is the part there that is critical for this. This is where your eye goes, just like that. All right, so now on the inside of the box, this is also important. You're going to open it back up. Any box will do. And you're going to take that computer paper. Just like this, a nice little white piece of computer paper. This is going to be your projector screen. We're going to tape it before we get it in there, just like that. And then tape it right to the back of the box. And this is what you're actually going to see the eclipse on. The sunlight is gonna come right through that little hole. It's gonna be projected on our white paper in the back, just like that. And that is where you're going to see the eclipse. Make sure you have enough glue or tape on it. I obviously did not put enough on to keep it there. Now this is really, really important. You're not looking directly up at the sun like this. You are keeping the sun to the back at all times. What you're wa wanting to do is this little hole right here is going to be over your shoulder. The sun is going to be to your back over the shoulder. Again, you're never looking at that sun. And then you're going to look right on through 
the hole just like that that you cut for your eye and then you will see the solar eclipse displayed on that white piece of computer paper so pretty cool now that's a bigger box of course if you want a more handheld version you can use a cereal box a lot of people eat cereal for breakfast myself included sometimes anyway you're gonna grab a little box at the top same deal cut two opening so this is where you would pour the cereal out one is going to be for your foil one is going to be for your eye to be held look if you look deep there i already have the piece of white paper glued there so that one's not going to move but then what we're going to do same deal cut a piece of foil big enough to cover that opening just like that and make sure that it is nice and tight. And then take your pencil or nail, just like we did before, little poke. And then, just like what before is, you're going to keep your the back, the sun is at your back. This is over the shoulder so that the sunlight is coming through that little hole. And then you just look in the back, just like that, and then you will see the solar eclipse projected right onto the back of the box.